it's breaking down your host team, your player development team activity into three buckets. So, and, and I, I'm going to try out a football analogy. It's the first time ever. So put in the chat if you think it crashed and burned. But I think we can look at it here. Why don't you put all three out? So there's three time buckets, outbound sales, customer face time, and administrative. So outbound sales, this is like your offense. Okay, this is how you're you're putting up points on the scoreboard. This is the time that your host team is focusing on driving incremental trips, driving incremental revenue. So these are trips that wouldn't have happened if your host team didn't have some intentional time where they're reaching out to players, inviting them to the VIP event, inviting them to stay over the, over the weekend. Uh, so that is a direct, you can make a direct line to revenue with outbound sales activity. Next is customer FaceTime. Now this is kind of like defense and, and that's where you're building loyalty. One, you're, you're building loyalty. So if one of your competitors starts uh, giving out more lucrative offers, more free play, maybe that loyalty to your host, that relationship uh, will keep the player driving a little bit further, keep them coming to your casino instead of the other in spite of a better offer. It also, that FaceTime can avoid maybe customer service issues, nip something in the bud before it festers and the host is mad and they're not showing up and you're not sure why. Third is administrative, and this may be like the special teams, where uh, it's obviously important, right? You you have to uh, make sure the, the host is sending over that reservation to the hotel or booking the player or scheduling the limo or uh, logging activity so management knows that they're doing something. Uh, so it's necessary, but administrative and Lou, uh, um, Oz, if you can add the, uh, there we go. Administrative, those are activities that again are necessary, but they're not driving incremental revenue and they're not building value for your organization. So how do you maximize value? How do you drive more revenue from your host player development teams? It's getting as much time as possible in these top two buckets. And then especially with outbound sales, that offense making it as efficient as possible. So to uh, illustrate this in simple terms, like how big of an impact you can have on your, your organization's bottom line by maximizing specifically that outbound sales time. If we look at a couple key metrics, so we say uh, trips per hour and then time selling. So let's say on average right now, a uh, typical host, if you give them a list of players to invite to a VIP event, let's say they can book two trips per hour and given all the other admin tasks they have to do, they've got 10 hours per week to sell. So, and just use round number, we say that the average hosted player may be staying a night, every trip that they're driving is $1,000 per trip. So using those numbers, they're driving $20,000 per week per host in revenue. Now, if we can make them a little more efficient, we'll get in we'll get into that, how you can do it um, as we go through the webinar. You can make them a little more efficient, go from two trips per hour to two and a half trips per hour, and then cut down on some of the admin tasks and give them more time to sell, go from 10 hours per week to 15 hours per week. All of a sudden, that the productivity of that host jumped from $20,000 per week to $37,500 per week. So just by tweaking those those uh, little metrics, you're getting an extra 17,500 per week per host. So depending on the size of your host team over the course of a year, that can obviously be big revenue for your organization. So, so that all makes sense. Um, what is a good way to improve the sales per hour or the trips for, uh, per hour? And then like, what are the types of technologies or processes that would make managing a, a, a player book of business easier for the host team? and for the, the player development manager? Good questions. I, I mean, the first step, I wanna to go to the next slide. A, a, an easy win is to analyze the, the channels that your hosts are using to sell, okay? So I've, I've made a kind of a simple chart here, uh, analyzing the different, the three main channels that hosts use to sell and then kind of attributes of these different channels. So email, and I should add that email and text message I've, I put a check here for reach per hour. Like you, the host can reach a lot of players per hour. This is kind of contingent upon having the right tools in place because if they are having to copy and paste and send messages one at a time, reach per hour, uh, the advantage of email and text kind of goes away. But let's just assume you have a tool where they can send personalized emails or text messages at scale. Reach per hour is high. Phone call, that is not nearly as uh, scalable as email and text message. Attention grabbing, okay? Your VIP players, they're typically busy executives, they're entrepreneurs, they got a lot going on. They get a lot of emails. An email is, has a high probability of getting lost in the inbox, but a phone call, when that phone rings, they're seeing it. They're seeing that the host is calling. They're probably not gonna answer, 
uh, I mean, uh, like nobody answered phone calls anymore, but it's going to uh, grab their attention and a text message the same way. When that phone dings, they look and they see uh, the host's calling. Response rate, uh, I think probably a lot of people that are watching right now can verify that text message has far surpassed email and phone call with regards to response rate. So when it comes to selling, text message is the, uh, and we've got data to back it up, text message is the best way to market to casino customers today. Now, uh, this isn't one of those things where, hey, go, switch to text and you're kind of sacrificing something on the player side. Like it's good for you, the, the casino, but the players don't like it. It's actually the data uh, proves the, the opposite. So let's go to the next slide. So this is data from a, uh, a survey we did last year. We surveyed, uh, I think it was 150-ish uh, VIP players, and these were VIP players at a casino host at at least one casino. And we asked them, check all that apply, what is your preferred method of communicating with your player, with your casino host? And 95.8% of them said that email or text is their preferred method of communicating with their host phone call or in person is only 6.9 percent of players said that's how i want to communicate so listen phone calling phone call is not dead you're still going to have to make some phone calls but you can make your host team vastly more efficient by starting with email and text get all the trips you can and then go to the players that didn't respond to that and then call them so just by switching that process saying email text let's see what we get then call then maybe drop the segment down um but yes email text very quick way to improve your sales efficiency Greg, can i add something here um so i've done a lot of uh, research and training uh for millennials because a lot of our team is millennials now and uh in the, the research millennials hate phone calls uh, to the point where it causes anxiety like your phone rings your heart starts racing and I, I can't i can't necessarily just blame that on millennials like i did everybody does it like you look at it it's like oh no i'm getting a phone call but the thing I hear all the time is, uh, especially from millennials, is before you call me, think to yourself, is this textable? <laughs> it's like, I feel like that statement. That's so, so like, I, I might have told my parents, I'm trying to like to convince them to start texting. And I tell them like, look, when I get a phone call, I expect like my question that I ask them is who died? Like who died? Like is what's the first thing out of your mouth is you should sit down. <laughs> like, you know, I think there's some kind of emergency, but a text is just so effortless. You don't have to respond right away. You can wait, look at it for a couple minutes and be like, okay, let me get to it when I can. But there's no anxiety involved in a text. So um, I 100% agree with this. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Nick. Yeah, yeah you're 100% right. And I think this is unique to the casino industry where uh, if it's, you know, my oil change or whatever, if I'm getting text messages from, uh, you know, from the mechanic, I, I'll get annoyed like, hey, you do for an oil change. But for whatever reason, casino is, oh, is an industry where players or our customers actually like it because they're busy, but this is their escape and they want to hear from that casino host because they yeah. look forward, they're working hard, they're they're generating a lot of a lot of income, uh, they're working hard and then they look forward to the weekend, they look forward to that VIP event. So they want to get it. They want us as casino marketers to cut through the noise and give them a way where it's not a phone call. I need to make a decision now. I can see it. I can look forward to that golf tournament or whatever and I can respond at my leisure. 